when I got to school, there was that rumor that, oh, you had sex with this guy. And some of my friends came through and they said, this guy is HIV positive. So now I'm taking an HIV test and there's two lines. Mm. Like, I don't know how it happened. Some people say HIV can, at an advanced stage, make you mentally ill because it's like you're going to So when I had that moment, I was like, I'm going to go. Hey, 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 I'm coming out of the hospital in tears, I'm crying. But one good thing happened, it started raining. I was like, oh, thank God, you see me. Kanyisa. Hi, Justice. How are you? I'm good, and you? I'm good. Where are you from? Originally, I'm from the Eastern Cape, but I'm based here in Joburg. We are Teta. We are Teta. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How how do you find yourself in Joburg? Well, I came here to look for greener pastures. I think this is one of the reasons why a lot of us would leave home to a different place. Mm. We are always looking for something, you know, something to live on. Mm. Yeah. But when I came from home to Joburg, it was initially for school. Okay. I'd left Eastern Cape because I had to pursue my studies. And I got here to Joburg. Uh, I was fortunate to enroll with UJ. Mm. Uh, although for my first experience, like as a first year, I didn't really get to be accepted in a course that I wanted, but at least I got something at that time. Yeah. So I studied mining engineering straight from home. I got to UJ and then I was doing mining. Yeah, and a lot happened after. Yeah? Okay, can you please move the water so that the camera, maybe on the side, on okay, the side, sure. so that the camera can focus. <laughs> a lot happened after, which you're going to tell me. But before we go there, you teach a lot about HIV. Mm -hmm. And I, I was going through your TikTok and I was like, why is this person? Because a lot of people that are affected by the chronic disease, they don't usually come out the way you do. Yeah. And looking at you right now and you're smiling, and I'm like, <laughs> how though? How do you do it? Well, I, I just decided that, you know, it's time because uh, I think I'm almost like everybody who would find themselves at first, you know, uncertain whether this is what they want to talk about, you know, considering that there's stigma and a lot of people who have so much to say, a lot of bad things to say about, you know, HIV. So... I was diagnosed in 2012, you know. So after my diagnosis, I went through a lot. I went through depression. I went through, you know, like I was just living a shame, shameful life, you know. Mm. I was, it was just weird to be me at that time because I'm, I'm a happy person, like since childhood. And those that can remember me, if they do, they will definitely say that Ukanyi is this happy person. And that's, that changed, you know. So throughout that experience, you know, I had to teach myself a lot of things, accepting and end. But more, more importantly, as soon as I realized that, you know, you are not going anywhere, you are alive and with so many possibilities, you can rather use your experience to educate others that those, of course, who might be going through what I went through, pain, sadness and all of that. So I felt that, you know, if I could use my story I would be encouraging them to live, you know, a happy life without stressing about what's going to happen in the future. Sure. Yeah. Man. Can you take us back? And I don't know if you're comfortable to share that with us. Do you know how perhaps um, you might have contracted the disease? Although I never like talking about it more, but I definitely know how I got it. Uh, oh, you know, my story is so long. I don't know why I don't have a book here. <laughs> Please tell us. <laughs> because, um, you know, my HIV journey, how it began, uh, it was in 2008. I was doing grade 11. So, you know, like when they talk about the influence of alcohol and everything that it gets to put us through as young people, so I had my share of that experience. So because we went on a school trip, you know, very unorganized trip, but we wanted to be part of it. And yeah, consume a lot of alcohol. 
And that very same night, some things that I'm still uncertain about happened. But as soon as it was Monday and we had to come back to school, there were rumors about me that I've had sex with this teacher. Yeah, I know. (laughs) And and I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So when I got back, it was kind of hectic. I had to think hard. I remember, you know, because it was just a day trip where we went, when we went to you, that trip that we went to. Yeah. It was just a day trip. So like we were expected to come back, not like spend days or things like that. So, but then in the trip, a lot was happening. I was under the influence. And I remember some of the things that were happening, but some, I I think I need a psychic to remind me, you know? Yeah, yeah. So when I got to school, there was that rumor that, oh, you had sex with this guy. And some of my friends came through and they said, this guy is HIV positive, so you need to get your things right, Get find out what, what's happening with your health. So I think that was the beginning of my HIV journey. Right. You know, from there, um, I never really got a chance to, like, well, although, because it is a very difficult thing to talk about, yeah. more especially if you are thinking about it and it still doesn't make sense to you, you're trying to understand how did it happen? How did I allow it? Did I even say yes? Because where we, we were, it was a public space. So, you know, you're just trying to think, which corner? Oh, why? Why did I do that? You yeah, know, yeah. because I wasn't that girl. I wasn't that girl to date. I never had a partner. I never did all what my peers were doing at that time. So it was very confusing. I tried reporting that, you know, because I needed closure. I needed to find out what exactly happened to me and also get the teacher to speak, you know. Although when I spoke, when I reported the matter, I tried being anonymous, but this lady who was mentoring me at that time, she realized that it was me. And before I knew, my mother was from Joburg to the Eastern Cape. She was trying to ask me, is there anything that you want to tell me? Because the way I did it, the way I wanted to report this matter, because it was bothering me. Mm. You know, I had done it in a very funny way. (laughs) (laughs) So... Yeah, it was just that. That was the beginning of the HIV journey. So now what happened around that time is that um, my family tried coming into the part, you know, playing their roles. They went to school. The teacher was called, but the teacher was like, no, I'd never do that to Kanye. Mm-hmm. Kanye's one of, like, the most brilliant learners I have in class. She's bright. Mm-hmm. And because now that she's doing a matric, I think it comes, you know, that confusion. You know, when you are doing matric, you know, you are... We panic. So now mental health, a lot of instability in terms of everything. So then that whole situation became a huge question now as to who do we take, who do we believe. And at this time, I'm only reporting months later because, you know, I was so scared of being judged, you know. Also, I felt like I disappointed my parents. They gave me money to go to that trip for me to go and, you know, you know, we explore, you learn, and you, 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 you are away. Because I think the place that we went to, this is where they were generating um, a man. And, you know, when you're presenting that to your parents to say, give me money, I want to go to that trip, this is what we're going to learn, they will definitely do give you money. But unaware that when we get there, we're going to be under the influence, we're going to be drunk and things like that. So I had told them that, you know, what's so scared about this whole thing is that they're saying this man is HIV positive. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, that was just the story. That was just how everything was. But they tried. I remember because I was in metric at that time and the concern was, can you know you are a genius? I don't know if that's the right word to use, but (laughs) they believed in me. Yeah. 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 So they were like, "We, we don't want this whole situation to interfere with your studies. We want you to pass and go to a bigger South Africa where you are going to, you know, learn life in a different way. So now, having heard that from those people that I'd shared my story with, um, they did give me a bit of counseling to make to to help me cope, you know. But when it came to a point where I had to take my HIV, my mother didn't really like that idea. You were still in. I was high still at, in okay. high school. Okay. So as much as uh, when the time came for me to go to the clinic, my mother was like, "No, I don't think it's a good thing because already at that time I was just showing signs of being." mentally distracted you know i wasn't myself and you know a bubbly kanye forever loud forever laughing now i was just a sadness you understand mm. 
So then that's how I never got to test for HIV, you know. Right after metric of, I don't know how, it's by the grace of God that I was able to pass my metric because, wow, you know, there was a lot of things that I had to, you know, listen to. Some of my peers saying, ah, when are you going to act as if you don't, you don't understand what happened? You're going to act as if you didn't consent? Or it looks like I was also part of that whole thing, scenario that happened, you know? Mm -hmm. So everybody was like, ah, don't, don't, you know, or if, when, you know when, the peop when people speak? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, they make your life very difficult because you don't even know what to think. You, you can't think straight. <laughs> You understand? Yeah. Exactly. Jeez, man. So that was just it. But coming to Joburg now, this is after metric. I passed my metric. It was going to allow me to go study. And, you know, and at that time, you, we would do walk-ins. You know, unlike now, you must go through the online applications, blah, 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 blah. Mm, yeah. So at that time, we had to go and um, I, I did a walk-in. You remember, if you're a rural girl, you're coming from a small town. We don't really have career guidance. We don't have people telling us, if you go through this process, this is what you're supposed to do. But uh, by the grace of God, <laughs> mm. I managed to come down to Joburg. I remember coming to the campus, University of Johannesburg, because I've always wanted to study there. I knew that I wanted to go there. My mother lived in Joburg, so it was going to be easy for me, you know, to just come to Joburg and establish. Um, got to Joburg, and I walked in, you know, at the faculty, because I have I had uh, my, my uh, what, my aunt's husband was in mining, so he used to really encourage me to say, you know, I usually see young people there doing great, making money. So I think if there's any course that you're supposed to go for, yeah. it's mining. So when I came down to Joburg, I went straight to the faculty. And when I got there, I didn't have a bursary. So the question was, it's already late, you know, because, you know, some things we do them later. And <laughs> I don't know why, but it happens that you are late. Yeah. Huh? yeah. So now, when I got there, I spoke to the HOD about um, enrolling in mining. The HOD was like, oh, unfortunately, your results are great, but I don't have space. Only if you had a bursary, I would accept you. Mm -hmm. However, uh, I am promising you something that you can just find yourself through, you know, but um, second semester, I'll offer you a space. I guarantee you a space. You can come back to me and I'll give you a space. For now, it's quite late, you know. So I had to think now, what am I going to do? And luckily I met this guy um, uh, at the lift day in campus. You know, I was telling them, he was like, you look frustrated. I said, yes, I am frustrated. The course I wanted to do is full, da, 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 da. And he was like, can't you think of anything else? Now I'm like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do now because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm yeah. from the rurals. You know, yeah, yeah. I was told about mining and you want to make money. And I never got to be interested in other things. Although people believed that it was going to be an actual science because you know I know numbers I I don't know <laughs> I ended up you know talking to this guy and he just um, guided me through we went to a department of uh, analytical chemistry and then I was accepted you know so I enrolled did my first year as an analytical chemist student and second semester mm -hmm. because I had spoken to the HOD and I knew that mining is what I wanted to do so I went to the HOD and I was accepted into mining. So it was kind of wow. like I am registered for a year to study analytical chemistry. And lucky enough, there were modules that they were going to credit, you know, mm -hmm. they were going to give me credits for those modules so that I can, you know, when I get to mining engineering, I, I don't have to do those modules again. Right. So, yeah, I spent that whole year again with analytical chemistry, learning everything, titrations and all of that mm -hmm. until, um, you know, I'm growing, obviously, because where is the story going? I'm just trying to give you an idea of how now do I relate my HIV status to the one in the Excellent. past. Yes. Yeah. So now I come to Joburg. <laughs> I, I study. I'm not, you know, having those uh, ideas of falling in a relationship, dating and all of that, because I'm like, uh, I have been through a lot. I'm not even sure if I want to date. I'm not even sure if I want a relationship when I still have a lot of things that I have not figured, you know, about myself. What am I going to bring in that relationship if there are things that I haven't even healed from? Do you understand? So I wasn't dating um, during my varsity time, but 
And although there were people that I could see and be like, oh, this one is my type, but you know, <laughs> they're not approaching me. Yeah. <laughs> That's where the problem is. Yeah, there's always those type of people. There's always those type of people yeah. like, oh, I can date this one, yeah. you know? Yeah. So once upon the good times, I went, I remember it was in Bramfontein, I'd seen this girl, ah, very gorgeous, hey? And our eyes happened to be in contact and, you know, that was the beginning of my being in love. Started off with a girl, then I was in that relationship. With a girl? With a girl. Oh, okay. Yes, with a girl. Yes. My first lover was a woman. Leave that story of that man in high school. So now when I just get into the relationship, obviously I am still, well, young. Because when I did my first year, I was just 19. Do you understand? So I am still young. I'm still... I'm, I'm even trying to understand myself and I'm like, hey, man, how is it that I'm here? Mm. You know, like yeah. it's a girl. You know, I had those questions in mind. And yeah, it was the beginning of my love story. So, you know, I, I cannot really say with facts who gave me HIV. Okay. But now that I've mentioned that HIV story, so with the girl that I've met, because I was staying with my mother, then they were staying with their parents. There wasn't any way where we were, you know, would meet and be sexually, you know, active yeah. and all of that. Yeah. It was more like, kiss me, boy, I love you, and all of that. Do you understand? So then there came a time where my relationship now with girls became like, you know what, this is what you want. Yeah. This is who you are. This is who you're going to date. Do you understand? And until then, I had met a lot of other girls. And uh, before you knew, you know, <laughs> I was busy with them. And it was just, you know, like those fun moments. You just yeah. nothing hectic because I'm still a student at that time. Do you understand? So in 2011... <laughs> Because I did my first year in 2010, and article chemistry 2011, this is when I will, got to be enrolled in mining engineering now. And um, yeah, I'm still dating girls. So at the end of 2011, I'd met this other girl who was kind of old and matured and money. Then I liked her, you know, all the benefits. <laughs> so she was my second, you know, and I was in a relationship with her for a very long time. You know, our relationship ended in 2016, you know. It was like five years. That was like five years. Yeah. We were dating. We've experienced it all, like homophobic at some point. She was beaten up for loving me mm. and openly so. So it was just that, you understand? Mm. So now I had, I was so connected with her more than the other people that I've met in my life. You know, we were all over each other, right? And then there came a time where we had an argument. Huh? You know, like people don't understand this. It things. happens. You it know. happens. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. we had an argument, and because um, around that time, I would say it was in 2012. Now, I was going to my second year in mining, and at, in mining there was modules that were giving me a hard time, like a cat drawing. I, I didn't understand anything. I'm not artistic, you know. And I wish I had known that there was drawing there in mining that was going to give me a challenge. Mm. So I had deregistered the module, you know, because I was like, no, I don't want to fail. Like, you know, let me just put the module aside. And then had other modules that, you know, I had to repeat. So there was like three modules. So how mining worked is that if you are doing mining engineering, right, you will have to, you'll have to do your P1 and P2 before you proceed, you know, to the next level. That was UJ at the time I was learning. Mm -hmm. So it was a diploma that I did. So I had done my first year. Now it was time for me to go look for the, like the practicals mm -hmm. so that I can be able to go further and proceed with the course. I struggled to find practicals because I was just an NS first baby. I wasn't using a buzzer like others would, you know, those buzzeries. They would um, easily go to the field and practice and they can come back and finish the course. So that was like a challenge for me. But thank God I had those modules that I had to re-register, you know. So now I, I don't feel like my time is wasted because I still have some other modules that I have to complete. Mm. So at that time, I had uh, taken a job, you know, as a cashier at some store. Um, it was part-time. I was there casual. So on the times where I did not have to attend, I'd have to go to work, right? Mm. So on that particular day where I found out that I'm HIV positive, this is the day where my ex-girlfriend and I had an argument. 
So she, like we, 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 we had an argument <laughs> and you know, it was just violent. I bite her in the face and she took some nail cut and dropped it in my, you know, it was physical. So now I have to present myself at work, but how am I going to do it? Customer service means that you need to be laughing and greeting and all of that. And I knew that on that day, I am not going to be giving that, you know. So I had told myself that you need to go to the clinic rather and get a sick note so that um, when you get there, you are absent, you have something to present as proof that you are not feeling okay. So then I decided to go to the hospital. <laughs> and when I got to the hospital, uh, the conversation was very interesting. You know how people are so interested in this homophobic relate. I mean, the, the, the homosexual yeah. type of relationships. They're like, how you even fight? How do you even do the other things? So it was a conversation between me and the nurse. And then we ended up talking about things like, so you've never had sex with a guy. Do you understand? So I mean, I was thinking about my past now. Then comes 2008. I'm like, oh, in fact, I have a story. I want to say it's a rumor because at this point, I'm still, it's still unclear to me. Honestly, like alcohol is dangerous because I understand that Abanyaban, do they take it light, you know? But sometimes when we're too intoxicated, a lot happens and the next day you just can't remember and you're not even faking, you know? Yeah. So, so I'm like telling this lady, would you know what? Um, this is what happened. And I'm even to date, I'd like to really understand, but I'm also scared to test for HIV as much as I was and my family was at that time. Funny enough, even to date, I'm scared to do the test because I'm scared of what the relation, uh, the, the outcome might be. Right. And I've already had, uh, you know, some intercourse with other girls and at this point it's going to be so complicated for me to understand Wuti, where is it coming from do you understand right. but I have this story now it's got 2008 where you know da 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 and things like that do you understand so I we do the HIV test because the nurse was like to me can you doesn't help you could be HIV negative, but whenever you are silent alone and you think about your life, you will always be reminded of 2008 that you never, you know, got to really find out what was happening in that year. Are you, were you really infected according to your friend's statements that says, ah, like, let's just hope it didn't happen. Do you understand? Mm. So now I'm taking an HIV test and there's two lines. Mm. Yeah. So no. you were not ready for that. Like, you know. You came here because of you and your your person, you were fighting and you are here to take a sick note so that you can present to work, then not knowing that you're going to get two lines. Not knowing that I'm going to get two lines and you can imagine now my Yo, mind. Oh, man. I went crazy. I went crazy. At that moment, Shop. everything the past I forgot about the ones that I've dated because I was like, okay, without, you know, because sometimes you can't just look at people and be like, ah, oh, lonely HIV or whatsoever, you understand? Mm. So now I'm getting to that stage. So when I walk, oh, there's two lines and, ah, oh, it's finally, it has happened. It's happening. I, I'm not sure. Mm. Do you understand? So <laughs> that, that, that was the beginning of my scary life. Because from that moment after diagnosis, um, I remember the nurse told me, she said, okay, we're not going to do much today, but um, I'm going to write you a referral to room 21. In room 21, this is where they are supposed to do further tests. And back in the days, you know, because I was diagnosed in 2012, there was that thing, Yobana, if your CD4 count is still high, there's no need for you to take medication. So she had explained that to me as well to say, they will check the results. The outcome will determine the next step. Huh? You're telling me. I'm not ready to hear this. I'm not ready to hear even your voice now. Sure. We were laughing. We were happy. But now you are talking about HIV. It's a whole different story. Mm. <laughs> so I then left that hospital. It started raining. Mm. You know, there's one moment in my life where I'm grateful to God. Because remember, I've tested in the street of Hillbro. And I must walk back to my place now. It's not like I'm going to get to the car and drive. Nobody gets to see me. I'm coming out of the hospital in tears. I'm crying. But one good thing happened. It started raining. I was like, oh, thank God. 
you see me. Because now I'm crying, it's raining. Nobody can separate tears from the rain. Do you understand? Then I walked home, called my mother, because at that time she was on leave and at Eastern Cape, right? And my girlfriend had her own place. Although I lived with my mother, but I was always at my girlfriend's place because, you know, mm. I, I was the main chick, maybe, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> Actually, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll never know. Yeah. You'll never know. So when I got to my, um, like, the house, I called my mother. I was crying. I'm like, you know, I'm HIV positive. Because they know the story, the high school story. She wasn't angry. She was more calm. She said, but why are you crying? Do you understand? I'm like, I'm crying because you're so sure now. She's like, says who? And then she had told me about this lady who was powerful and all of that. She was like, do you know so-and-so? I'm like, yeah, I know her. She's like, then you, you will live long because she's also alive and kicking. Go check it out, you know? So it was just that. Um, I lived in denial after. I never went back to room 21. Huh. I never went back to tell my ex-girlfriend that I'm infected. I had a lot going into my mind. It was like, oh, hey, what if I found her already infected and now it's going to look like I'm the one who gave it to her? Because you, like, you, you just never know. Although there was a time where I told her about what happened to me in high school and I also told her to, to what certainty, you know? And then we, we, had, uh, we, 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 we never decided to test. We never went for an HIV test. So as much as that story... Now I had another, you know, sexual engagement with, you know, her and others. Not many, though. <laughs> mm, right, okay. Exactly. Yeah. But I, when, when there's an S, people A are couple. already thinking, oh, yeah. this one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, and then uh, it was so hard for me to disclose my HIV status to her. And I had told myself that I'm not going to tell anybody. My mother knows. And funny enough, you know, HIV is very strange. And it's not an easy thing. It, like, well, I would say then it wasn't easy to talk about it, you know, mm -hmm. because although my mother knew that I told her that I'm HIV positive, as soon as she came back to the door, we never had a conversation about that. I'm being for real. It was like when she came back, she gave me this long hug and told me everything is going to be fine. There wasn't, um, what's the next step? What did they say? They, that was the end of it. So I had to live my life just like that. So 2013, I'm still positive, not on treatment. Don't want to go to the hospital ever because I'm like, Lord, you better make me strong. I don't even want a cough because if I go to the cough, it will lead to another test. And maybe this time they will arrest me. <laughs> so I, I I remained like that, you know, yeah. certain lifestyle changes. I drank even more now. Sure. I was just crazy. Jeez. I was just crazy. I was more toxic in that relationship as well. We used to argue, but I think it became worse. Do you understand? It was just me, like, it, like I don't know what was happening to me at that time, right? So, but yeah, in 2014, 2014, I, God was like, ah, it's, been, it's enough now. It's enough. You have lived. You have done much. I will send you. I will send you to another place. Maybe this is where I was supposed to go for me to start doing right. Do you understand? Yeah. I became sick. I had symptoms. Yeah, I was losing weight. You know, if you are 21, if you are 22, uh, because you know, growing up, I had a big body, right? So, yeah. but then... I started losing weight and it was just strange. A lot of people ask me, Oh, can you win some garden? Can you feed? I'm just like, Fuck, I'm a top of my lungs. So, you understand? So, people are like, Oh, give us the plan. What's working for you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I lied. I was like, I've joined the team. Don't, 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 don't. You know, sure. because now in my mind, I'm like, HIV is grinding me. HIV is surely grinding me because why am I losing weight without efforts? Well, I'm thinking also lifestyle, drinking too much not having enough time for myself, you know, that that could have contributed to the weight loss and the stress of knowing that I'm HIV positive and I'm the only one that knows. And not only that, I'm still continuing where we left. I didn't just become diagnosed and say, I'm not going to sleep with my girlfriend ever. I, I went back to bed. Do you understand? Now, all of that stress, <laughs> it's something. Do you understand? So I became sick in 2014. 
started off with weight loss. My skin was, yo, it's like as some snake was crawling every day, feeding on my skin. I was something else. Then it became worse when it was mental. Masanya. Like, I don't know how it happened. Some people say HIV can, at, at an advanced stage, make you mentally ill because it's like a woman in jaitis, about in in, you're going to So, I mean, I had that moment saying, Shania, he's like, Ella. Yo. Oh, like that, that, that's the story. <laughs> this is way. You're being for real. I am being for real. Like, diarrhea, non stop, pampas, 23 year old. What? Pogama pampas. Huh? The hell vibes, you know, like, yay, it was so bad. Sure. So now, at this point, I'm sick. I'm still dating this girl. I haven't told her that, you know. She hasn't seen you like that. She, in, in obviously, that. she was part she... of the whole sick experience because oh. I am sick, she's present, and my family already knew that Ukanyi has a girlfriend. And, you know, although it becomes so hard for our families at times to accept that, Mm. But they had allowed, you know, in the bala, yeah, no, it's okay. And my mother, you know, my mother is young. She she, mm. she had always that thing, when I fear you, but something more than Ukmita was going to happen. Because Ukmita is just nine months, you're out. HIV is forever. Do you understand? So some of the things our parents fear. Okay, fine. I'm sick, hospitalized, mentally ill. Uh, everything is running down the pants easily like unje ganja do you understand so yeah then this is how my my ex got to find out because when i was hospitalized the doctor gave my mother a call when when my girl was there with my mother and the phone you know lama phone up dala we kuma ku 100 no mwe beke ku zero like lama phone loud la waya the doctor is like ma'am do you did you know that your daughter is infected my girl is this. My mother's like, yeah, I knew. So <laughs> it's over for me. But what you going to do? I'm sick. I'm tied in ropes. I'm hospitalized. There's pubs in every hole that you can imagine. Yeah. So now then that was how she found out. So she told me that she went to test for HIV. She had done several tests, frustrated and angry, and telling herself that when I catch you, Kanye, you are dead. If my results are positive, because in her mind already she says, why was I silent about it? That means that I was already taking the blame, yeah. assuming that it is mine and I'm not going to tell her because, you know, so fortunately went through all the periods, the window periods and stuff, and she was negative. Oh, Okay. Yeah, what? still is negative. I'm not sure the man you go to say Jalena Boban because it's really some people would say, um, in, in uh, the relationship with girls to girls, there isn't much chances, but there are some risks, you know. That's why you would uh, find, you know, educations around dental dams, finger cords, because we wouldn't have that type of knowledge if it wasn't possible to infect each other. Mm. Do you understand? So that was just it, and the beginning of my treatment journey, I started taking treatment, uh, mentally ill. It was given to me. It wasn't a, a matter of, I want to do this. I'm now ready. Uh, let's do this. It was a matter of, she's positive. All of this, the first thing we have to give her are my ARVs. And that's how I started taking ARVs. Sure, while in hospital. While in hospital, they, they were fed to me. It was explained to my whole family. Uh, that's the whole part I loved about the whole thing because I didn't have to come back and re-disclose. Do you understand? Mm. So already they understood. They had to give me. I had my ups and downs today. Today, right? Tomorrow, today, 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 today. We understand almost that mental journey. It was just crazy. So I started taking my treatment and... I remember having a counseling with this uh, lady at the clinic because I was initially hospitalized here at uh, Johannesburg Hospital. This is where I was hospitalized, right? But because I had complications, apparently I was bleeding through those pipes they had inserted, sure. and it wasn't supposed to be like that. So then they decided, you know what, it's better she go and die at home. And my mother is young, and they're already telling her, Dobana, listen, you know how, how, how expensive it is to carry a dead body home. 
So it's best you just take her clothes because, oh, this is strange. And she also had some people telling her that, are you sure this is not a spiritual thing? Because every time you walk in, she becomes worse. I don't know why, but, but that was what they yeah. told me. And of course, my family gave one, they didn't just rest in, which, you know, with HIV, most sometimes you get people thinking, how much much young loy? They were using witchcraft on my child. Now, why? You know, it became to that point because why are you mentally ill? Sometimes people do not understand these things and they end up mis, you know, interpreting, diagnosing, and even sending you to the priest to say, lay hands on my daughter. So I went through all of that before they surrendered me to the hospital. They sent me to some commas. They were told a lot of things. You know, they will tell you things when you need to, when you are expecting to hear things. You can never go there and they don't say anything, right? So my family had that, my family had that information, but together they also understood in Nobana, the HIV con. So at the hospital, because I was becoming worse while on treatment, they said, send her home, send her close to home, because this is really strange. So I was transferred from that hospital to home. And you know what they say about home? Home is where the heart is. And as soon as I got there, yeah, it slowly was picking up. I was recovering, I was surrounded by my family who was caring and who was making sure that nobody sees me. Because some people, when you are sick, they are coming to see you so that they can take pictures. And then the next day you're on Twitter trending. If there's anything about sickness, it's your face that shows. Do you understand? Yeah. So my family had protected me from that. Some of my friends are even saying, oh, we were never given a chance to come and see you. I don't know if they are lying, but my family told me that we did not allow anyone to come and see you because we thought it, this was the, our private moment. Although I was hospitalized at the hospital and some of my friends that I went to school with were already nurses there and they saw me, it, that, that was just about it. So as soon as um, I started taking treatment and I was recovering, I, I, I then had an opportunity to, to, to decide on my own. Before that, I sat with this other lady from home who was a counselor. She told me what, Kanye, I am not going to lie to you. I want to be straightforward. I want to blame you for what happened to you. People are HIV positive, been for a long time, but they not all of them go through what you went through. You know why? Because they started their treatment. You had it bad when you didn't take your, 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 your ARVs when you were diagnosed. But now, think about it. So now I have to think about it. I had to think about it. I had to ask myself, like, It sounds funny, but it's very <laughs> It's very serious. Actually. It is serious. You know, I, was, I asked myself, you know, I'm still young and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I might have lost time, but definitely I pick her up some way. Do you understand? So then I took that decision to say, okay, I want to start taking treatment and being serious. That is around 2015. I was almost hospitalized, something to close to eight months, what? like in and out of the hospital. Sometimes they discharge you, but ah, uh, ah, uh, and you you understand that mm -hmm. language. <laughs> yes, especially. Nice. So then I had recovered. I had to take it upon myself. You can rise from this. You can be okay. That mama said, you'll be fine if you take treatment. So why don't you take it? Because as much as everything around me happening, I knew that what I wanted is to live. And I know but there is a purpose behind my life. I can't be, you know, all over and happy and only for me to die like that without even saving nothing, you know? So then I, I decided to start taking treatment seriously and adhering to my treatment. Mm. Yeah, that was the beginning of taking my life serious. It was just that. Jeez, man. How grateful were you when you were starting to be okay? Like now you're back. You've gained weight. No longer wearing a pampas. You, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. How, how grateful were you? Oh, my God. I, 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 don't, I don't know if there's a bigger weight than gratitude. But wow. You know, I even like while I was recovering, I was still not well. I hated mirrors. I'm not gonna lie to you. Mm -hmm. Then I'd be like, I'm it's disturbing me because what I saw then, it was hectic. 
Like there was this time that I will never forget when one of my friends that we went to school since high school and we met at UJ, we were together. We met on the street. She couldn't recognize me. Wow. Then that's when I knew what hey when she wafa. Do you understand? Yeah. Imagine your friend can't even see that this is you. You understand? Mm. So I am. I was so grateful, more especially when I started gaining weight because I had lost so much weight and it was questionable because people have always, you know, seen me as that. And I knew that this time around, some have already, have already seen me at the hospital and they're already having their assumptions. And I wasn't even ready to tell at that time, Guti, okay, this is this, I'm this, that. Do you understand? Mm. So <clears throat> I'm so grateful. I was very grateful to see myself, the bones, Asangana. We understand and his body was, oh, you know, like, you, you are slowly coming back. It gave me, it gave me a lot of, you know, energy to say, you need to continue. Although I had challenges in the journey, like my viral load didn't want to be suppressed. Do you understand? Yeah. I was taking treatment and although the treatment wasn't working, this is why I always say accepting is important. Because I had started accepting this journey. I had started accepting that I'm HIV positive. There's nothing that's going to change about this. It's been standing, you know, and this is my life. The medication wasn't really suppressing my viral load, but I was day by day, I was starting to glow. Mm -hmm. Acceptance. Mm -hmm. Took the pill for like five years, viral load still high. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm even scared to have sex with anybody now because I'm thinking, yo, now it's going to be different because I know my status. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to be studying relationships, becoming da 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 da, and I know that I have a, ver a viral load, it's going to be a problem. And lucky enough, Lampin Chiami had forgiven me and she said, you can't come back. Let's, let's restart this thing. Let's, let's be together. Let's yeah. rock. Although, man, she gave me a little bit of joy. I was like, I'm going to say that. I was like, I'm going to say that. I was like, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. So, <laughs> it was that. But still, I had that challenge of the treatment not working. Mm -hmm. But because I had accepted myself and those around me that knew they were so supportive, I was able to gain the glow back to be, you know, myself again slowly. Because it took like three years for me was born. I got to buy stufus and yana manja from, you know, lesas lend so and things like that. So, yeah. But now it's, it's, a, it's also a different story. Yeah. I decided to speak. <laughs> I know I talk too much. <laughs> no, no, that's right. I decided to speak about my status during the time of Corona. Yeah, I don't want to make this sound wrong because yeah. if I'm saying I only came out because I could see that I'm fresh, I could be actually uh, like shutting it down for those who are in their bed, sick beds now, who want to use their story as an experience, as an example to mm -hmm. say, I'm here now, I know I'm going to recover. But one of the things that made me to speak about my status and be bold was the fact that when I looked at myself in the mirror with HIV present in my body, I was like, who am I different from? You know, I look like everybody on the street and nobody can even tell that I'm infected. At that point, I was so confident. Do you understand what I, even if they can say anything, I know for a fact I'm strong. You understand? I know that at this point we are, we are kind. So what made me to speak also was the time of Corona. You know how they came in and they said, everyone who's HIV positive must brace themselves. They are about to die. Coronavirus is coming. Oh, I was like, not me. Then I spoke and said, guys, but I'm here to tell you that not everything Elaim Flaben is meant to kill us. I am the I am the witness. I was diagnosed with HIV in 2012. Oh, the social media was like, ah, you lie, don't know weird, like all of that. I'm telling you, it was yes. in 2020. Like I disclosed in my on my Facebook. I had spoken about this to my family. I told them, I am ready to speak. But about Bazotin, Babapek. Not about Pabanti because right now you are Papa ne Capechu. I'm not no Mundon Patelli Pray Pecla. So now these people. <laughs> so, That's why I always say, like, exactly. yeah. so why, why, why do we have to think about them now? 
do you understand? Wow. Because I'm like, I want to pass with Bang Yenzelan Abantu at this point because I've stand, I'm standing. Yeah. Because I had to also give myself, you know, that that vibe you go to Uzo Kona, and not not a lot of people were there to help me throughout this journey. Naba block habo onke like Facebook. So the, you were getting attacked. By my family. My family wasn't attacking me, but they felt that it was unnecessary for me to speak because Abantu. Oh. Then I said, I will block you on my social media, then I will speak. And I only forgot one cousin. Hmm. And then that's how they found out that, oh, can you open Facebook? We are disclosing right now. Second so video is telling everybody that you're in HIV. We are poor. <laughs> so I was like that, and that's how I spoke. It was for me to bring hope to others because I didn't want to go through sad moments of thinking that I'm going to die when I've been through what I went through. So I thought this is actually an opportunity for me to come out and encourage those who are infected to say, it's their time, you know, God wants them, God is ready to receive them, but not all of us are going to live like that. So that was the beginning of my advocacy, like around living with HIV. So you decided to do content on social media. Mm. Were you getting more positive reviews or more negative reviews? Because there's a lot of people, man, in South Africa, if they find out that you are HIV positive, they're going to come for you. Yeah, you know, like before I can even respond to that, I had a conversation with somebody. She was born with HIV. She says, you know, my virus is likable. Like even the comment section is like, oh, no, baby, you're going to overcome. You are doing amazing. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. And then there's me with the condomless sex. Yo, I'm not going to lie. Like this topic divides like the world. There are people who are so supportive. They are telling me every day, we are behind you. We really appreciate what you are doing, raising awareness, uh, motivating people to live a healthy life and accept themselves, you know, the way they are. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't change something, this is my line. I always say if there's something that you cannot change, you need to accept it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And then there is those ones, you know, they are still there. You know, you get to a point where people are saying, why do you disclose? I mean, gone are the days of what so, 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 like HIV that used to pam and relax people. Why are you quiet now? Why can't you disclose? It's supposed to be easy. Mm. People are healthy, but they forget that there's people who are stigmatizing HIV. There's people, I'm still called names like, yeah, very, we is fair, but you deserve to be infected. I mean, talking about the post that I was responding to a week ago, People calling me names like, ah, Vene, there's no need for you to tell because we can see the nose piercing, all the piercing that you got. They say so much about you. Do you understand? In this day and time, such comments, and I still also get people telling me now because I don't know when we give our experiences, sharing our stories to people, we are not trying to talk about this so that they can ridicule us. Mm -hmm. We are speaking so that they can learn from our experiences. And we do so, we are honest. So sometimes I would talk about medication side effects, you know, including those where we gain weight and sometimes in uncomfortable places. You know, like I'm getting people challenging me, me now as if I'm not the one who told them that this is part of my journey. Some are saying, ah, just keep quiet. Do you understand? In this day and time, we have people that are speaking like that. So then we, we would always decide to focus on the positive people. Those who are saying, we see you, you are doing an amazing job. Thank you. Do you understand? Mm. And those ones, they keep me going because I would have stopped if I listened to the ones who are negative. I would have stopped, you know? But then I also had to prepare myself. I knew with HIV, and people have their past traumas. Mm. People have seen what they saw and, and, and. But I knew I prepared myself for all of that. So as much as they think it's harming me, I take that negative comment and, and make it as, a, as an educational you know, experience. Teach them and even revoke questions that are challenging them to go to their homes and test their families to see in Dobana, are they not affected? Because some people would think it's being infected that counts. But also when you're affected, HIV is affecting homes, you know, villages, societies. It's worldwide. Do you understand? So you're either infected or affected. So that's just it. And you can't see me different when your cousin is infected. 
Maubona mi nuboni school part but mtana gini umbiza babes gorgeous. I mean, does that make sense? The very same cousin here, Queen Angola, are just like me. I'd say this generation is so privileged because born unlike us, they have PrEP. Mm. They have PEP. PrEP is like a, a treatment that one can take to prevent being infected. PEP is a treatment that one can take after exposure. Can you see how privileged mm. they are? Mm. But still, you'll find them in corners talking so bad as if they don't have these options, let alone abstaining and condomizing, which has long been standing, and some people are failing, you know, when it comes to the two. But knowing that there's PrEP, there's PEP, why are we still panicking? Why do we still have people calling us names, ridiculing us, telling us, you men, I'll never date someone who's HIV. The rejection is real. The rejection is really real. And I don't know if these people ever think about that, you know, Bana. Their families are also infected and they are supposed to date our brothers. So if we can instill that thought in our families' minds to say, you reject somebody who's HIV positive, who's going to be popping up them cows and paying lobola. It's so funny that some of the family members, they have people that are HIV positive and they're not even aware, but they are busy attacking people. They are busy coming here. I'm not going to have somebody who's HIV positive and stuff like that. That's what is happening. It's funny. Like, I, I, I'm still trying to understand which, why. <laughs> like, why? Because with the numbers standing, the last time I heard about the stats, they were saying, like, we're running close to 8 million. And even more, because we know that people are scared to test. And the fact that you can be HIV positive for a very long time without the, 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 the sickness showing itself, mm. like they call it the first stage where you are asymptom. You're walking brave, you're walking strong, you're insulting people. And the virus is also heads on in your system. So do you understand? <laughs> so I don't know why people can't really get along and understand yeah. the information and the knowledge that we have, but... Mm. Yeah, like something like that. It's, it's funny. <laughs> it's very funny. Are you are you still, you know, in relationship with a woman? Ah, uh, story for another day. But I think now, you know, by Ashabati, as you grow, you uh, you 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 are able to even understand yourself more mm -hmm. when it comes to sexuality. But I'd say I think I'm bisexual now. But also, there is a man in my life now. No, there's oh okay. yeah, and then they, I don't like posting. I want to bang a kukangi lobo la lepkenza and lapung betray you God. 100%. But I am in a relationship and I've, I've disclosed my status. I speak about my status and yeah. Would you have kids with the the new guy? Uh, well, about kids. I, I think, you know, like as, as this conversation you know, must you know, continue yeah. because yeah, it's another story. <laughs> yeah, it's another you know? story yeah. I, before I can even talk about it, I want to share, you know, what happened back then, okay. my thinkings and my fears, then so that you can understand yeah. everything. But it's possible to have a child when you're HIV positive. Thank you. It's really much possible. We become virally suppressed. Our viral load, you know, I, I know it's a big term for those who are still not interested in this language, but your viral load, it measures the amount of virus that is inside your body. So now, wh when we take a treatment continuously, same time, different places, right? Because some people think that you can only take it at home. You can take your pills anyway. Right? So now our viral load becomes suppressed. Uh, it goes, it drops to a point where it is untraceable. And if it's undetectable, it's untransmittable. So now chances, you know, are we, we cannot transmit it to a sexual partner. And there are also very minimal risk when you are just giving baths and you find out the baby is infected. And, 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 and more to that, there is other things that are employed to a pregnant woman during that whole process, you know. They, after, during labor, they make sure everything comes out nicely. They get treatment, da-da-da-da. So uh, we uh, cannot wait to experience uh, uh, know the world where we, we, we are saying the, those who had HIV in 20, uh, let's say 2024, they were the last generation to catch it because it's possible. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Then from next year and up, we don't have new infections now because science is good. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually want you to give out two advices. Number one, for somebody who just found out that they are HIV positive, 
what would you say to them? For somebody that found out that they're HIV positive, I'd just tell them it's not the end of the world. And sometimes, you know, we're coming from a society where somebody, makakalukala, they're expressing their emotions and feelings over something. They are seen as weak or whatever. Mm -hmm. I tell them, go through it, but don't waste time. Don't waste time because time wasted, it never returns. It's, 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 it's not so difficult, you know. It's not so difficult because now we have the best treatment that is able to help us, you know, stay healthy, strong and everything. So if you are stressing over something for a very long time that has a solution, what are you? Do you understand? Mm. So I'd say that, you know what, you, they need to take it easy on themselves. They need to learn, you know, more about it. And, and they also need to understand that it's not the end of the world. You can still, you can live long. You can fulfill and achieve everything that you've always set as your goals or what objectives in life. You can go on and, and, and just do great, you know. We are here, uh, although life is so unpredictable, but we are just here and alive and everything is sharp, sharp. For somebody who knows they are HIV positive and they're just denying it, you know, they don't want to drink treatment, you know, um, they just don't, they just don't believe it that they're HIV positive. What would you say to that person? Hey, because I went through that stage and I ended up in the hospital, I would say, hey, they're inviting my situation there because, wow, Kavala <laughs> over something that has solution. Like, I'm, I'm being for real. Yeah, yeah. So now if you are in denial, you don't want to take your treatment because Abantu Bazotin. Just think, and would you rather live this precious life, Yako? Because our lives are precious. Like, you know, like, we feel that so that everything goes together. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not taking treatment, obviously you will be sick. Not taking treatment, it, it, it invites opportunistic infections. Do you understand? So, so, I would encourage them to say, I understand that our society is full of other toxic people, as much as that, people have to choose themselves. People have to understand that you are important. It doesn't matter what you are diagnosed with. It doesn't matter what people are going to say about the journey that is, uh, that is yours. You are so important. Do the right things for you because the very same people you fear, those are the same people who are going to take pictures of you and post, them on so and post them on social media should you become ill. Because we know, Uti, as much as no, everybody sees us healthy and they're like, oh, HIV is not what it used to be. Try not taking medication. Uzaibon, Uti, HIV. It's kind because there are people like us now who are forcing it to obey. Otherwise, it's still as dangerous. It kills. It can just change you to be something else. And nobody wants to experience any of that. Kanisa, thank you so much. Eh? Um, I really appreciate you so much. Thank you for sharing your story. Mm. Um, you say it, the way you're telling your story, it sounds funny and I'm laughing, but it's actually something that's very serious, mm. you know, and uh, people have died yeah. because they were uneducated with mm. HIV, you know. It uh, went from HIV to AIDS and they passed away, mm. you know, and it's very important for us to you know, educate people. We mm. need people like you to be on the internet because people are always on the internet to teach people, mm. you know, so that we make HIV to obey. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Justice.